Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Mayor Sly James and City Manager Troy Schulte unveiled the City's 2014 through 15 Citizen Satisfaction Survey results during its Salute to Services last week. The survey shows that citizen satisfaction with the quality of City services is at an all-time high. It's now ranked at 60%. That's 7% above the average for Missouri and Kansas cities and 10% above the average for comparable U.S. cities. So joining me here today are five of our very best employees from various city departments representing all of the workers who work for this city and who've helped us achieve their significant citizen satisfaction improvements. So let's welcome Mike Husero. Uh, Mike is a utility manager for Kansas City Water Services and he helps ensure that water is safely transported to and from your home every day. Where's Mike? Is that you Mike? There you are. Good. So this year, water services satisfaction went up 1.8 percent. So Mike, thanks to you and all of the water workers, we really appreciate that very much. Now from the City Health Department is, say hi to Amy Roberts. Where are you Amy? There you are. So Amy's a program manager who helps make Kansas City's children's and homes safer and healthier places to live, learn, and play. The quality of our health department went up 2.6%. So thank you, Amy, and everybody at the health department. So next we have Clarence Brown from Parks and Rec, the department that operates community centers, keeps parks and boulevards beautiful, attractive, and safe, but also the Parks Department is an integral, absolutely essential partner to Mayor's Nights, to Club KC, and to all the things we do to work with and program events for our youth of our city. The Parks and Rec satisfaction went up 2.2 percentage points, so Clarence, thanks to you and everybody in Parks for serving our citizens. Now, Samuel and his co-workers patch potholes, maintain alleys, and uh, help with snow removal. So from Public Works, here's Samuel Foster, who's the District 2 labor leader. Uh, thank you very much, Samuel. There you are. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. All right. Meet Sergeant Michael Lenore uh, from the Police Department. Sergeant Lenore is among the many men and women who put their lives on the line to make Kansas City a safe and great place to live. Uh, this year, citizen satisfaction went up with the quality of our police services by three percentage points. So thank you, Sergeant Lenore. Thank you very much, brother. I want to thank everybody at the police department and all of our city departments for the dedication and work in delivering exceptional service. So please join me in congratulating all of these workers who represent the total group of workers in this city. One thing that I'll say is, is that none of these achievements would be possible but for the tremendous work of the people that work for this city every day. They come, they work, a lot of times in obscurity. They certainly hear about it when something goes wrong, but now we want to make sure that they know that we appreciate it when things are going right. The survey results show significant improvements in 34 categories. On the other hand, the survey also provides city leaders with valuable information about areas that need improvement. This year's survey reports declines in airport services such as the price of parking and facility cleanliness, as well as in animal control and mowing and tree trimming. Kansas City uses this data, along with resident feedback, to improve processes and better allocate resources. For more information about the survey, visit kcmo.gov satisfaction. Remember the frenzy last year for those Royals Avenue commemorative street signs? Last week, the City of Kansas City presented a $35,000 check to the Kansas City Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities program at their end of the season celebration. The money will fund the purchase of a sand pro machine to maintain the infield and a winter conditioning program for players. Many thanks to Kansas City residents and Royals fans who bought signs, a portion of the proceeds made it all possible. The RBI program at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Kansas City gives youth a chance to play baseball and softball while learning teamwork, leadership, and life skills. The program was founded in 1996 thanks to a partnership between the Kansas City Royals, the Kansas City Parks and Recreation Department, and the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. 
Many people who need to check on the status of their case in municipal court call 311. In fact, it's one of the top reasons people do call 311. Now there's a new way to get the information you need to find or pay your ticket all without calling 311. A new online search function is now available and it allows customers to search for cases in six different ways. The enhanced online ticket payment system is the second significant upgrade to municipal court operations in recent weeks. Municipal court has also launched a new time to pay plan which allows installment payments for court fines. Both improvements help Municipal Court continue upgrading its paperless case management system and it makes it easier for residents to do business with Municipal Court. All of the changes can be found by visiting kcmo.gov and searching court. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. As I'm sure I don't have to tell you, you're very fortunate in this city to have uh, great support from our elected officials, uh, particularly in the 6th District. They are both great friends of Parks and um, and really believe in what we do and, and have done a good job of supporting the neighborhood. So, um, Councilman Sharp and Councilman Taylor, thank you for all that you do for us. And um, with that, um, Mr. Sharp, would you like to say a few words? Well, thank you very much. I'm certainly pleased everyone could be here today. When this was brought to us, uh, uh, a few years back, uh, this tower was in bad shape, and uh, it might not have looked too bad if you're just driving by and just glanced at it. Yeah, but, it did. <laughs> yeah, okay. that looked a little bad. But when you got up to it, you could really see just how much it had deteriorated, and some of that was structural deterioration, which really endangered uh, being able to maintain the tower. And uh, really, it was folks in the neighborhood. Uh, the Homes Association, the Friends of the Tower that Curtis led, that, that really brought this to our attention and, and put it on the front burner because it had been on the back burner too long. And we did get it stabilized. It does look nice now that since it's been painted, and it is structurally sound. It is not deteriorating anymore the way it was when water was leaking in, which really endangered its structural integrity. But I'm looking forward so much to the next phase, which will start uh, later this month and be completed this fall, to do the landscaping. This uh, chain link fence will be replaced with a wrought iron fence. We'll uh, take care of the steps and put in uh, landscaping around here to really make it look as nice as it should, to make the area around the tower look as nice as the tower. But more, maybe more importantly, uh, it we will also add lighting around the top and lighting down at the ground level which will shine up so it and that lighting can change colors so when the Royals are back in the World Series uh, we'll be able to uh, turn it blue again and Councilman Taylor uh, has been a great advocate for this and and that really will make make this uh, the iconic landmark it should be. Uh, we were concerned when, uh, four years ago that this was going to be our uh, leaning tower of Pisa <laughs> because of the shape that the tower was in. And so we, we felt strongly in investing uh, to support the park, but also to support the surrounding neighborhoods, because this is something you see, it's very visible from a long distance around. And uh, we, we thought it was important to send the message that we will continue to invest in our parks and our facilities uh, so that everybody can enjoy them and, and really feel good about being out in the park. And uh, I, I want to uh, thank the Parks Department for doing another great job. Our Parks Board, uh, Alan and uh, Dave are here. Uh, they have uh, been a, as strong an advocate as you can have for public facilities and improving our parks. And they're at every event. They're very supportive. We reach out to them with a lot of questions and advice, and uh, they're always there for us. So they do a great job. Let's give everybody that I just mentioned a hand. Uh, but, you know, sometimes the government has to step in, the city has to step in and make a uh, public investment to help out on, on good causes. And this was one really good cause. So we've uh, allocated over the last several years uh, approximately $850,000 to this park, uh, which is a lot of money, but it, it, it's well worth the investment because this will uh, maintain the park, the neighborhoods, and this tower for many decades to come. Uh, the one thing we... we said we needed to do though if we're making this major investment is to uh, elevate uh, the use of the park 
and so the lighting concept came up. As as you've heard, we, we all know the Royals will be in the World Series in October, so <laughs> that is why you see the uh, rendering in blue. So that will be one example. When the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl, we can turn it red. <laughs> Halloween, we can turn it orange. Uh, you, you can be as creative as you want, but the idea was that if we can light up the tower, we can have vent, events at the park around those uh, those events with, when, and, and use the tower as kind of a backdrop. And that's something we haven't been able to do. So this investment will, uh, will, will help with that. And I just want to once again thank all the neighborhood leaders that we met with and uh, for their vision for this, because without it, uh, you know, it, this may not have happened. And, and we really appreciate it. A new airline will soon fly out of KCI. Allegiant Air now offers nonstop jet service from Kansas City to Orlando, Southwest Florida, and Tampa St. Pete. Air service begins November 12th. The new flights will operate twice a week. Three new cities in Florida. You may have heard of Fort Myer, Orlando, or Tampa. And if you've flown down to those airports with small kids, you probably don't want to go back to Orlando anytime soon. But these airports, Punta Gorda, Sanford, and St. Pete Clearwater are in those cities, but they're away from the international airports. Matter of fact, in Orlando Sanford, most of the international traffic coming from Europe to see Mickey and Disney land in Sanford. So you will find much easier in and out in those airports rather than the big international airports, and it's, it's 10 to 15 minutes away from the attraction. So this is really great for Kansas City. Florida is a very strong market for us. And for 49 bucks, I think the, the passengers are just going to go crazy over these flights. Jazz Alive is hosting the second annual Charlie Parker Jazz Festival with events, discussions, and performances now through August 29th, which would have been Parker's 95th birthday. The events include a reimagining of the annual 21 saxophone salute on Parker's birthday. That takes place at Parker's graveside in Lincoln Cemetery on Saturday, August 29th at noon. For a complete list of events, visit kcjazzalive.org. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.